What's going on everyone? It's Ben from Wajo from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the Scientist FTK deck in Vampire format. Now, this deck was really big in the previous format to Vampire, which was Breaker format. And that was because Scientist was at three copies. And Last Will was a bit less restricted in this format. So, you know, the deck ran pretty rampant. Although in an actual tournament, the deck didn't actually wind up winning. It got second place, um, you know, giving way to a bit of a more just consistent deck, like a more good stuff deck uh, that was sort of tooled to stop the scientist deck in its tracks. And uh, for vampire format, it seems like the deck is in a somewhat similar position. Uh, I don't think as many decks are like, you know, sort of hard countering scientists. Like, I don't think many decks are playing like Wang Hu in the main. Um, but I do think that, you know, the deck is somewhat less consistent in this format, and it really is very high rolly. There are hands where you just win automatically, and there are hands where you just lose automatically. And if you play the deck, you do need to keep that in mind. However, the version of the deck that you're seeing in front of you here did come in second at the last Vampire Format tournament, so I figured I'd cover it before the tournament that we're holding this weekend. So if you're interested in playing games in Vampire Format at a competitive level, head on over to the YGO from Zero Discord, and you'll be able to sign up for the tournament there. We also hold monthly tournaments in a variety of formats, so uh, that's the best place to play in those. But... Uh, I figured I'd want to cover this. I'm not necessarily sure if this deck is like one of the best decks in the format or if it's like tier two and just got lucky. Um, but I do think this is a pretty good starting build for it if you are planning on playing this deck for yourself. This list was made by Ellie Tin Can. And as I mentioned, it did get second place. So let's just dive through it and talk about some of the differences between this deck and some of the ones that we saw in Breaker format. So firstly, you know, this deck is very similar to the ones in Breaker format, and that's playing Triple Catapult Turtle, Triple Last Will, and a Scientist. Of course, uh, you'd like to be playing two more of this, but it is limited in this format. So you just have to make do with the one copy. Now, a note about Last Will in Vampire format is that uh, at this point in time, the ruling had changed with Last Will to align with how it works in GOAT format. So basically, you have to activate Last Will before your monster is sent to the graveyard in order to trigger its effect. You can't do it afterwards, which does make this card somewhat weaker as your opponent can sort of play around knowing that you have a Last Will in play and basically make you waste the card. Uh, that being said, in Science, it's still very good um, because you can trigger your own monsters getting sent to the graveyard with things like Cannon Soldier, Catapult Turtle, etc., um, so I do think that Last Will is still a major piece of this deck and one of the ways that this deck can FTK, but it is a little bit worse in this format. We also have Triple Mystic Tomato to bring out Scientist as well, as well as bringing out Sangan or Witch of the Black Forest. Uh, Tomato, Sangan, and Witch are all a bit weaker this format given the existence of DD Warrior Lady at three copies, um, but you still do want to play these, I think, to sort of bring out your other stuff. Uh, we also have just some generic good monsters we got Break of the Magical Warrior. Uh, Cannon Soldier, I guess, is a generic good monster, but also is here for the FTK. Can trigger Last Will and also deal additional damage by just tripping your monsters for 500 each. Uh, the Capital Trolls, as I mentioned. Cyber Jar here is a bit of an iffy inclusion, in my opinion, but I do see why it's here. It can draw you deeper into your deck uh, to pull up the combo. Unfortunately, though, if your opponent's, like, attacking into your stuff uh, and then you hit a Scientist off of Jar, uh, that can be really bad because then Scientist will wind up in Graveyard, most likely. Uh, so it, it's kind of like a high-risk, high-reward sort of thing. And also, you know, Cyberdark can lead to situations where you're taking a bunch of damage as well. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about this card in the deck here, but it is a pretty interesting card, and I think it does you know, merit experimentation. We've also got a Fiber Jar here, which again is another card I'm not really sure how I feel about, uh, because Fiber Jar, like, it resets the game board to potentially give you another chance to draw into the FTK. Uh, however, you know, Fiber Jar also takes into account the damage dealt to you, so, you know, after it resets everything, you'll still have taken damage, so if you've taken damage past a certain point, uh, you can actually draw hands that, even if you have the way of getting Scientist and Turtle on field, you won't be able to FTK. So I think this is kind of iffy in my opinion. I get why it's here. I think it can be good. Um, but I'm not sure if it's best in this deck or not. That'll take more experimentation. Uh, next up, we've got Triple Gravekeeper Spy. This is a really good way at, you know, sort of preserving board presence, uh, having a monster on field, then distribute for Catapult Turtle, Trigger Last Will, etc. And also deck thinning as well. So I think this is a pretty good inclusion. Uh, it also plays around your opponent's Magical Scientists, um, because most of the time people bring out, like, Dark Balter to hit over your sets, uh, and Spy plays around that. 
We've got also a tribe infecting virus here. Uh, this can also trigger Last Will. Uh, you pitch a card, call Aqua, and it destroys itself. So it's very good in that regard. And also it can just be used to pop your opponent's field as well. Get in for potentially more damage. Uh, next up for these spells, we got Change of Heart, Dark Hole, Graceful Charity, Harpies for the Duster, Heavy Storm, uh, the Triple Last Will, as I mentioned, Mirage of Nightmare, Monster Reborn, Triple Mystical Space Typhoon, A Painful Choice, Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Raigeki, and the Forceful Sentry. Now, Heavy Storm and Harpies for the Duster are here because you need to clear away your opponent's back row. You could also play copies of Giant Trinity as well to do that, um, but this can be vital if you do wind up going second. Uh, I've seen some people experimenting with playing things like Spell Reproduction potentially as well as another spell. Um, it can pair well with like Painful Choice. If you Painful Choice sending a bunch of Last Wills, you can then Spell Reproduction back a Last Will. Um, so there are some things that you can do with it there. Um, but this deck includes not to, you know, run it. And I think that that makes sense. Spell reproduction does take a lot of investment to actually pull off. So I can definitely see why you wouldn't necessarily play it. Um, but it is something to consider if you're building this deck for yourself. Moving on to the traps, we got Call of the Haunted, Ceasefire to deal a bit of additional burn damage and also protect against flip monsters, uh, Imperial Order, Mirror Force, and Ring of Destruction. Moving on to the side deck, uh, we've got a pretty interesting side deck here. Um, I'm not quite sure how... Ellie intended to side for these matches, um, so I'm sort of just guessing at certain things. But some some tools in here are very you know sort of straightforward, like Royal Decree. Uh, this card can be really good against burn decks at shutting their stuff down. Um, you've got Magic Cylinder, Double Torrential Tribute, maybe for more aggressive decks. Um, you got you know Triple Mother Grizzly. Uh, this is kind of awkward in this format, as again like Triple DD War Lady does exist, and that can eat through recruiters. Um, but I guess if you're playing like Triple Mother Grizzly, Triple Tomato, uh, then that's a bit tougher for your opponent to chew through. So maybe that's why this is in here. Um, we got a DD War Lady of our own. I guess if our opponents on a bit of a sort of uh, recruiter strategy. Exiled Force, maybe for similar reasons. A uh, Jinzo to shut off our opponent's traps, just like the Decree. Um, Serpent, uh, this is just a generally good card. I think some of this might also be to, like, to side out of a hand rip, potentially. Um, like maybe siding out a Forceful or something, uh, if we don't think it's going to be useful for us, like if we're going second. Um, so that could be here for that as well. Uh, sort of feeling like to stall a bit longer in a Magic Cylinder to stall as well and also deal some burn damage. Now, for the extra deck, um, Ellie elected to include only certain monsters here, so two Dark Vaulters, triple Dark Flare Knight, triple Empress Judge, Punished Eagle, Roaring Ocean Snake, Ryu Sentry, and double Restrict. Um, this extra deck is unlimited at this point in the game's history, so this is perfectly fine. If you want to go into something like Fiend Skull Dragon, for instance, um, you can just, you know, bring out a different monster or a token and say, okay, here's what is representing, like, Fiend Skull Dragon. Um... But I think the way that I like to build these extra decks uh, just includes pretty much all the relevant fusion monsters that you potentially see. So that would include things like Fiend Skull Dragon, Reaper on the Nightmare, etc. Um, but you can check out, you know, pretty much any of my Breaker format videos does have the extra deck sort of teched out completely with all those fusion monsters. So you can check that out if you are interested in seeing what that sort of extra deck does look like. I wanted to preserve the deck list as Ellie played it, uh, and so I just brought this deck to some games and, you know, tried it out. So let's see how it actually does. Okay, the first game we've got is against Dump Truck, who is a frequent guest of the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. Uh, we actually do win the Rock, Paper, Scissors, so the game might be over right now. Let's just see how it goes here. Uh, you know, Scientist, as I mentioned, it can FDK. Uh, there are cards that do it, and we're actually... Oh, we're really close. Depending on what we draw off Pot and Graceful, we could have the combo here. Uh, if we draw Catapult Turtle off this, then we do just win the game pretty much. Um, because what we can do is we can pitch a monster off Charity um, and Reborn it back, Last Will, Summon out Turtle, Bring out Scientist, and that's the end of the game. Uh, we do play three Turtles, so uh, let's see if we can actually do it. We're going to Pot of Greed here. We don't quite draw it yet. We're going to go for Graceful. And we don't quite do it here. Yeah, nothing we can really do. I mean, this is a really, really good hand. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think we're in a really, really good spot here. Uh, but we can't quite FDK, unfortunately, even though we do have many of the pieces to do it. We're just going to pitch a Great Future Spy and a Last Will, because we already have a Last Will in hand. Uh, and we do want to just sort of set our hand here and, uh, you know, draw the most off Mirage. Uh, we could have potentially set Reborn as well. Uh, I do want to sort of play around if they've got, like, MST plus Harpies. 
Um, so I don't want to lose the Reborn, as Reborn is very essential to our combo. Uh, it can bring back cards from the grave and, you know, set a tribute fodder for Turtle. So I do think that Reborn is arguably the most important card in our hand in terms of com combo pieces. I know the Lost World is very important as well, uh, but I value Reborn a little bit more. So I wanted to keep that there. Uh, in the standby, they're going to let that go through. So that tells me that they probably don't have an MST. So I'm feeling really good about that. We're going to go for this Imperial Order here and that will shut down their Harpies. And I think we're in a pretty good spot. They're going to set two pass back to us. And we still don't quite have a way to get to the combo yet. What we can do is set Cyber Jar now. And then next turn, we'll potentially have a way to get to the combo. Because we can flip Last Will, flip Cyber Jar, pop our field. Um, and then that will enable us to summon from deck. So I think that is what we are probably going to do. We're just going to keep the IO up. As losing 700 doesn't mess up with our scientist math. Uh, so I feel fine about this. And they are going to summon out a Zumbire the Dark and attack into our new set. So that will trigger the uh, Cyber Jar here, which is quite unfortunate. Because we wanted to trigger that on our turn so we could actually fire last will. We also do hit a scientist here, which is really rough. Uh, we do have Reborn and Premature Burial. So we do have ways to get this back. Um, but it is a little bit awkward here. Uh, let's see what they actually pull off their uh, Cyber Jar picks as well. Luckily, Exod Force and Serpent don't quite do it here, um, but it is a little bit awkward. So what we what we got to do is we got to set Tomato and Scientist to sort of mask which one is which and prevent them from getting the most value out of the Exod Force potentially. Um, and so, you know, the idea here is that like, uh, worst case scenario is they attack into our scientist with their force and then pop the tomato after that. Um, but if they attack the exod force into tomato, uh, then they take a hundred and also they have to choose which one to pop after that. And luckily they do attack into that. Uh, it's not destroyed because they have 1100 defense. Um, and they will indeed pop these scientists, which I think is the smart play there. They're going to set two pass back to us. In the standby phase, I actually think we might have the combo online here. Um, so it's a bit awkward, but we can, like, MST our premature burial to pop whatever monster we bring back, which will be able to trigger last will. Um, and then we have a heavy storm to clear their entire back row as well. It's really awkward. Um... I think we have to order it, like, instead of using MST on our pre-mat, we have to use Heavy on our pre-mat, and that will do it, because Last Will will trigger um, when the pre-mat destroys the monster, and we do want them to have an empty back row when that happens. Um, so we're going to think about this a little bit. I think I actually misordered this, um, because I just, you know, summon Witch now. I don't think that I needed to summon Witch now. I was trying to bait out, like, Torrential Tribute, but I think what I should have done is I should have just fired Last Will preemptively, then gone for pre-mat, uh, and at this point, like, we're feeling good because, um, the one thing that stops is if they, like, have MST, which would be kind of rough for us. Um, uh, but if they got MST, you know, they got MST. Um, and yeah, that would be annoying, but I feel like we still are in a decent position, even if we can't pull off the FDK this turn. Um, but I, I messed up something the witch. I shouldn't have done that. I was trying to sort of bait the torrential tribute that I know that they had, but I don't really think there was a reason to do that. Um, we're going to go for the pre-mat now. And we're going to target the scientist. And again, I should have fired the last will first beforehand. I honestly kind of forgot the ruling uh, of it at the time. And that really messes things up here. Uh, They're going to go for ATT here, popping our board. And now we don't quite have the follow-up because we can't actually uh, use last will here to search out a card. And we've already used up our normal summon. Um, and we need to use Monster Reborn uh, for uh, the scientist because science is in grave. So... Yeah, really awkward situation here. Uh, I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, we'll just set a ceasefire just to deal some chip damage potentially. But uh, it, it definitely was a misplay there. I think if I had played it differently, I think we actually could have potentially won that turn. Um, but alas, you know, I'm still learning how to, you know, play the deck in vampire format as opposed to breaker format. And there are some differences there that I need to take into account of. Um, they're going to summon out Witch, attack in for 11. Pass back to us. We draw Sangan. I think we probably will be able to do it here. We're going to fire this last will. They've got IO, but we do have this MST to pop the IO. We're going to summon out Cannon Soldier, not use priority. Uh, we are just going to quickly do some math here, and I think we do indeed have lethal. Uh, so what we're going to do first is just fire the ceasefire here. No need to get greedy on this, as we can do well over lethal just with the cards in our hand. Fire heavy here, clearing their back row. 
and we choose not to Raigeki here because we can change of heart instead. Get an additional 1100 damage there. Uh, bring back Magical Scientist there. Um, we're going to go for the Scientist, bringing out this Thousand Eye Restrict. Fire Last Will, tribute off the Thousand Eye Restrict for Cannon Soldier, deal 500. Uh, that does count as a monster going from field to grave, so we can bring out uh, double Catapult Turtle off of our two Last Wills, and this should be more than enough damage to finish them off. So that's how explosive a turn that this deck can have. I think that we could have won this game uh, last turn instead, um, but again, I messed up. And uh, yeah, I feel like uh, this was a very good showing for the deck. If your opponent doesn't really have much going on, I can really combo off and kill them quite efficiently. So that will indeed be the end of game one. And uh, going into game two, again, as I mentioned in, in the sort of deck breakdown area, I wasn't quite sure how to side with this deck. Um, I think what I tried to do was like, I cited out things like Cyber Jar, Fiber Jar, um, because I felt like those cards weren't quite the best in the deck. Um, and so I brought in things like, uh, I believe I brought in the Grizzlies because I didn't see any like DD Warrior Ladies from them. Uh, so I figured having the Grizzlies in the deck would be good for going into our turtle. Um, especially if they don't have the Warrior Lady, but uh, if they are playing Warrior Ladies, then that would be pretty bad for us there. Uh, we did see Rhoda from them last game, so uh, maybe they are playing a Warrior Lady package. So maybe that wasn't the right choice. Unfortunately, our opponent's going to go first and fire Confi on our board. We actually had a really, really good board here with Darkle and Sangan, plus Last Will. Uh, it could have been really, really good. Searching out a card, bringing out a card from deck, uh, and that would have been really nice. Unfortunately, uh, it's sniped out by the Confi. Can Soldier can bring out a monster off Last Will, so it might be worth going for. We're just going to go for this MST there on their back row. Clear that out of the way right away. Um, and we're lucky it wasn't IO. I think actually what I should have done here is I should have fired Last Will first, uh, and before going for MST, because if it was IO, then we could chain MST to the IO. So that was a minor missequencing on my part. It didn't matter there, but there are definitely games where it could matter. So it's good to keep in mind for the future. We're going to tribute off that can soldier, pay five, bring out a magical scientist here. And then we're going to use scientist, bring out a dark balter, hit over their set, uh, to negate it. And uh, then we're going to attack in for 300. Looks like they are on Warrior Lady there. Uh, main two, we're just going to set this Mirror Force. That's why I felt okay going for this play, because I figure with the Mirror Force set up, um, we can protect our Scientist, uh, and unfortunately the Harpy's Feather Duster will deal with that. But it looks like they don't have any other um, monsters there, so I feel good about this. We draw a Grizzly, we're going to bring that out, switch the Science to Defense attack in. No need to play in the Mirror Force. They do indeed have the Mirror Force there, so we'll lose the Grizzly. Uh, which is unfortunate. And they're going to attack DD Warrior Lady into our Scientist. Now, this could be really bad for us. If they banish the Scientist, then we don't have access to that combo piece. And most of our deck is just dead at that point. Uh, but luckily, they choose not to. I mean, we are still in a really bad spot because they've got Warrior Lady and we have nothing. Um, but... Yeah, if they'd banished the Scientist, that would have been pretty bad. Um, but then again, if they'd banished Scientist, we would have been able to summon up Mr. Tomato and just beat in here. So I think that keeping the Warrior Lady worked out for them. And it might have been the right choice because they were low on cards as well. Uh, and they just need a monster to stick. Uh, unfortunately for us, they've got Rota. They can bring out Sasuke Samurai, which they probably sided in against our deck. Uh, as that is pretty good, especially when they saw that we're playing like Gary Fury Spies, Cyber Jars, etc. Um, and yeah, we drop Pot of Greed though. That's really nice. Could potentially get us out of this. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite get us out here. Raigeki can clear their board of monsters, but we're kind of in a top deck war here. And if they're playing a warrior deck, they've got more live top decks than we do. We're just going to keep the Forceful Sentry in hand, try and bait out like a hand rip if they've got it. Um, but they're just going to pass back to us. We draw a decree, which is pretty nice. You know, not the best, but not the worst either. Um, we did bring in decree, I think, because we were going second, and I figured, you know, if they're playing traps, we want to have another way to blank their traps. Uh, they're going to bring out a, uh, tribe infecting virus here, hit in for 16, and they're going to pass back to us. We draw a ring, which we'll be able to deal with their tribe, so we'll set that. Fire forceful. They've got Io here, uh, so it's kind of awkward here. Uh, we do fire the royal tribute now, just to have the forceful go through. Um, but then this shuts off our ring, so it's a bit weird. But uh, yeah, what we have to do, we do this because I figure if they're using Io on a Forceful, it must be a pretty impactful card in hand. It was just a TT, so it was kind of a waste. Um, but now what we have to do in order to make our ring live, we Giant Trunade here. And uh, now we've got Ring of Destruction plus Royal Decree. Ring can pop the tribe. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll have to do. Uh, it's Again, it's awkward um, because, you know, we kind of wasted the Trunade, but we kind of had to do that. 
Um, they're going to set three, pass back to us. We draw Graceful Charity. We know about the IO. They're just going to fire that. But we've got the Decree anyways, so uh, we figured this is fine. They're going to chain Call the Haunted to our Decree, uh, which makes sense. And we draw three. Oh, these are kind of awkward. Now, I was thinking here, if I fire heavy, I can pop the call, which will then pop the worthy leader because the decree is set at the same time. Um, but asking judges after the fact, it turns out that this is actually not the case. Uh, the decree negating the call at one point will sort of make call and worthy leader forget that they're linked. And uh, the worthy leader will survive even if decree is destroyed at the same time as the call. Um, so I think with that knowledge, uh, I think actually I should keep the painful choice, try and send some monsters or just removal options for the warrior lady. Um, but unfortunately for us, uh, the warrior lady will stick around. Um, but you know, we weren't quite sure at the time, so we just sent it to the graveyard either way. Uh, either way, I don't think it'll really matter here that much. I think we're probably still going to lose here because they've got better top decks than we do. And yeah, Injection Fairy Lily is quite the top deck. So that will indeed be the end of the game. Uh, not really sure there was anything... We really could have done there, honestly, um, with that Lily top deck coming down. But uh, I think in an ideal situation, I should have kept the painful and gone for that instead. Um, but yeah, that was game two. I think it does show how the deck can go pretty low on resources and life points uh, if you're not pulling off the combo. And also it shows like some of the skill needed to pilot it. I definitely think I misplayed there in a couple different cases. Uh, I think I could have potentially played the turn I brought a scientist a bit differently. I could have brought out something else from deck uh, with Last Will. Maybe that would have been better, uh, less greedy. Um, but I thought that getting the scientist into rotation was good early on. And also I thought just like cutting them off from whatever monster effects they might have would be good as well. So I don't know. Maybe that play was correct after all. Um... Either way, we're just going to side back into pretty much the original build because we're going first this time. Um, so we, you know, bring back the fiber jar, bring back the cyber jar, etc. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to win this one. Unfortunately, we don't quite have uh, a winning combination of cards here to actually, you know, pull off the combo. We're going to do the pro heavy set, try and bait them into setting macro there. Uh, although with Harpies in the format, it's a bit harder to bait them into doing that. They're going to go for a painful send five cards, including a Sinister Serpent. Uh, now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of sending Serpent off of uh, painful, uh, unless you're just also sending some like pretty bad cards that you don't want to draw, um, because there's no reason then not to give the person Serpent if you're faced with this choice. Because if they've got something like Graceful Charity or something else to discard Serpent off of, um, you could have given them the choice of discarding a different card in their hand instead. Basically, they're going to pick the least value card in their hand no matter what. And so there's no reason not to give them Serpent because they'll get back Serpent the next standby phase anyways. And just giving them another card here just gives them more options to do things. I mean, you want to restrict as many options that your opponent has as possible. So we're going to give them back the Serpent there. Uh, they're going to go for the Graceful Charity there, drawing three, and then pitching a Serpent and a Snatch Shield. They've got Pot of Greed as well, uh, and so they likely will have a way to clear our monster, unfortunately. Yep, they do indeed have a Sasuke Samurai, so that will get over the Fiber Jar without triggering its effect. And uh, that's kind of rough for us. We draw Call, which I guess can, like, chump block the Sasuke. But uh, what we're going to do here instead is we're going to Reborn back this Don Talug and just try and hit in to the Sasuke, rip a card out of their hand. Unfortunately, they've got Ring, so that will indeed deal 500 to us here and pop the Dawn. We're going to set a Call of the Haunted here, pass back to them. Again, we can, you know, chump block with the Fiber if we really do feel the need to. Uh, it's kind of awkward, though. So we're just going to take the Five for now. Uh, they're going to set one, pass back to us. We draw an MST here, not really the best. Uh, we really need to draw some monsters of some sort, um, but we're just not doing it. Uh, they're going to think about this a bit. They're going to summon out a Tribe Infecting Virus, hit in for 2100, and we just kind of have to take that. Uh, we've got Dark Will here to clear the board on the following turn, though, so that's kind of nice. Forceful Sentry, I mean, might as well fire that first, just see what we're dealing with here. Uh, they've got Raigeki Break, so they will pitch the Serpent, preventing that from being shuffled back in the deck. Luckily, they target the MST here, so we'll be able to target their other back row there. They've got Book, they're just going to flip the Sasuke down, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that way, if we do have a monster, then, you know, we won't be able to hit him for damage. We see what they've got in hand. We got Change of Heart, Exiled Force, and Dark Hole. We actually make an interesting choice here. We pick the Exiled. The reason I do this is I don't want them bringing out a monster and then hitting in for like a thousand each turn. That puts us on a bit of a clock. And I figure given the hand that we've got, uh, if we do get a monster on field, uh, we could just be going for game here either way. So I figure the Change of Heart and Dark Hole won't quite matter as much into that. Um, so I just send back the Exiled Force here. 
Um, there are some cheeky plays we could have done with Exiled. Uh, we could have potentially called Vahan and back Fiber Jar, Chain of Heart of the Exiled, uh, attacked in for 15, and then tributed the Exiled to pop our monster. I think Exiled can target anything on board. Actually, no, I don't think Exiled can target anything. I think that's to target your opponents. So actually, that wouldn't have worked. So never mind. Yeah, I think the Exiled was the just correct choice there. They're going to try attacking in for 300, and I make a major misplay here. Uh, I'm thinking, like, I'm at 4,000. This is dropping down into the 3,000s range, and so I'll be losing out on a science activation. So I go for a call here to block that, and this is a major misplay. I think call is a bit too valuable to be wasting on blocking 300 points of damage. Um, but, yeah, I go for this play. It's, it's awkward. It doesn't really um, do much here, and uh, so I think this was a major mistake on my part. Um, but it's what I do, and, uh, you know, I can't really take it back now watching this back. I just think for the future, you know, it's good to keep in mind. Uh, we're going to attack in to the Serpent with the Spy. They've got Mirror Force, though, so we'll pop our entire board. Now we've got no defenses here, um, and this is going to be really bad for us. We could have switched the Fiber Jar to Defense, I guess, um, before attacking in, but I don't know. I don't really think that was that worth it. Like, losing the Fiber Jar isn't that bad for us in the long run. Um, although if we add switch to defense, maybe we could have protected ourselves from like a Don's Lug or something. Um, they're going to go for a Rota here, grabbing Warrior Lady, which implies that they might not have another Zaylug in deck. They're going to bring out the Warrior Lady attack in for 1800, drop us down to 2200, and we're in a really dire spot. Uh, luckily we've got Change of Heart to deal with the Serpent there. Uh, so what we can do is we can Change of Heart the Warrior Lady, summon out this Mystic Tomato, uh, attack the Warrior Lady into the Serpent, banish both. Uh, getting a lot of value off that change of heart, and then attack in for 1,400 here. We'll pass back to them. Uh, they are going to fire a hole, clearing our tomato, setting one, and passing back to us. Um, yeah, this is, this is a really rough spot here. We draw another will. We have to set that uh, as a bluff. You know, if they've got harpies, either way, we're kind of screwed. Um, but yeah, they just choose to flip up the spy here, bring out another spy, and they're just going to go straight to battle here. And if we had still had the call, we could have brought back this Mystic Tomato, blocked a bit, uh, gotten in for a little bit of damage next turn. Um, but since I wasted the call early on on the Fiber Jar, we are just dead here. Um, so I think that, you know, I really messed up there with the with the Fiber Jar um, call. But uh, then again, with Change of Heart Monster Reborn, we're probably going to lose here either way in the long run. Um, this would have given us just another turn, though. Um, so I think it's good to keep in mind for the future when playing these decks uh, that you really do need to be thinking about every play and you can't, really can't afford misplays. Um, if you wind up in a top deck war with your opponent, there are just so many dead draws for you uh, that it makes it really awkward um, if you misplay with things like Call of Hana, which can be a very, very powerful late game play. So I do think that, you know, I didn't play this game perfectly, um, maybe not even well, but I, I do think that, you know, game one definitely shows how powerful this deck can be uh, if it manages to get off to the races. And I think games two and three shows how debilitating this deck can be if your opponent like brings in good side deck tech for it. And also you just don't quite draw into the combo. But this wasn't the only match that I got with this deck. Let's dive in to the other games as well. Okay, we've got a game against Yami Chaotico here, who is a frequent guest on the channel as well. They always bring interesting decks into the mix here. So let's see what they bring today. Uh, we are playing the science deck again, and we do win the die roll, so we do get to go first here. And that's pretty good. Um, there might be a way to win here. Hmm, it's kind of iffy. We're going to go for a painful choice. We initially, you know, do our typical painful choice shenanigans, but then we realize, wait, we can actually potentially send five that can get us to win the game here uh, if we get, you know, lucky. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to send Triple Catapult Turtle, a Premature Burial, and a Monster Reborn. I actually think in hindsight I should have left one turtle in the deck, and I think I should have probably sent, like, a Cannon Soldier instead. They still would have given us the turtle. Uh, actually, actually, no, I think what we should have done here... We should have sent, um, we should have kept one turtle in deck and sent a forceful, um, because forceful would have been a card that they would not want to give us here. We still have one turtle in the deck to bring out with the last will if we need it. Um, but yeah, here the choice is easily turtle, and now we can't quite be as reckless with the turtle. We have to make sure that, that turtle sticks, as we have no way to get it back. Uh, the good thing is, is that if they attack into our tomato and we bring out scientists, I think we do just win the game because we've got Harvey's feathers to clear the back row. Uh, we can, you know, summon out turtle, um, you know, by just tripping off a monster that, uh, scientist brings out and that will just be the end of the game there, I think. Uh, but unfortunately they've got the link with duo. So if they hit something good here, we might just lose the game. 
And uh, they hit the Harpies. That is very good. But it's not quite enough to get us to lose the game. Ugh, Tomfy, uh, that that might be. They take the Will, which is still a good pick. But uh, yeah, the Turtle is the last Turtle we had in deck. So if they took Turtle, then we wouldn't have actually had a win con necessarily. Um, but now they're bringing out Gaku Gary Panda. Uh, attacking in to our set. It's a Tomato. So we'll take 200 from that. We're going to think about this a bit. And we're just going to bring out a Scientist. Because... We do potentially have lethal on board here. Uh, we just bring out a fusion monster, tribute out catapult turtle, and, uh, you know, just attack in. Um, it's a bit awkward because the Gaku Gary gains uh, attack based on how many monsters we have. So actually what we might do instead is use scientist, bring out like Ryu Sentry, attack in to Gaku Gary, and uh, attack in directly for 300. Uh, that might be what we have to do. Um, but ultimately, I think it's still the best play um, because Ryu Sentry can stop any traps they have to stop our plays. Uh, and if we can get in for some attacks, then I think we might just be able to win the game. Um, so we're going to bring out Sentry. That is fine by them. Uh, we're going to pay another thousand uh, to bring out this Thousand Eyes to take the Gyaku Yire. Uh, so this will enable us to um, get in for more damage because we can tribute off for Turtle. And then get in for 1300 as opposed to just getting in for 500. Uh, they do have a ceasefire here, which will deal 2000 damage to us. So we do chain sentry as we're taking a thousand less this way. Um, but it's still kind of awkward because we had to use the sentry and now we're in a bit of a rougher spot. We're going to attack in for 1300 here. Uh, they've got a Waboku. And we just take the thousand here because the way I reason it, is that right now we're dealing them 1300. Uh, if we let the Waboku go through, we'll have to deal some more damage later anyways by paying 1000 for Scientist. But the max that that can do is 1100. So right now we're getting in more damage for the same amount of life point cost. So I do think that this is the correct play here as we can't quite kill them um, you know, without doing this. So uh, we just got to hope that that last back row is not anything live. And, you know... They would have had to have like a perfect storm card for it to actually be something live here as well. So I feel like this is like kind of what we have to do. We could have potentially played it safe and not committed more to board. Uh, as you know, we do have other monsters on field and they've got nothing uh, except for one measly back row. So we might have been in a favorite spot here even if we didn't go for the full line. Uh, but I do think it is just good to do. Uh, as, you know, we are dropping them low. They'd make the thinking emoji, so maybe we should have stopped here because we're like, uh, maybe we don't want to tempt fate in case that's actually a real thing and not a bluff. Uh, but I figured, you know, making it at this point is more of a bluff move than a, you know, legitimate, like, oh, I have something here to kill you move. Uh, so I feel like this is still worth going for. We're going to pay another thousand, bring out another fusion monster from deck. Resentry is unfortunately not able to activate its effect to negate traps as we are too low for that. Uh, so we just got to hope they don't have anything. And unfortunately, they've got a just desert here. So unfortunately, that will indeed kill us here. And that will be the end of game one. But uh, yeah, I mean, if they didn't have just desert, then that would have been 1100 off the dark flare, 1000 off the sentry, and then 500 off the turtle, which would have killed them. So I do think it was worth going for that. But I definitely think I could have played it a bit safer. And that is one of the things that you need to learn when playing this deck is when to sort of go all in and when to play it safe. And I think in that situation, uh, seeing the Yaku Gary come down, uh, seeing our opponent fire a ceasefire there, uh, maybe that was a sign that we should have just, you know, sort of bided our time, not gone all in there, um, and just hoped our opponent didn't have anything for the future because, you know, it looks like our opponent's on a Panda Burn deck, and Panda Burn does play a lot of chainable burn traps. So... Yeah, it didn't quite work out for us there, um, but this is kind of our worst matchup. We do have Decrees in the side to deal with this, and normally when you face this matchup, you'd probably side out of Scientist altogether. Um, so, you know, games two and three here may not be uh, actually representative of how this match would go in a normal tournament, but I sort of wanted to show off the Scientist part of the deck a bit more, so I kept them in. Um, but normally when you face this deck in like a tournament match, you do want to side out of all the scientists and turtle stuff, uh, and just siding in the good stuff. Um, but since we are going first, we might as well try and pull off the combo here. We go for graceful right away. We pitch heavy and can soldier because heavy kind of conflict with the decree. Um, so we don't really need that. We're going to fire a forceful, we'll see what they've got. They've got a forceful of their own, Sangan, Imperial Lord, DV Warrior Lady, and Just Desserts. This is a bit of a tricky choice here. Um... If we set the Spy, we don't really need to worry about the Warrior Lady attacking in. Because even if they banish, we get another monster on field. Uh, we don't need to care about the Eye or the Deserts because we've got a Decree here. Um, the only thing 
that we need to worry about is like Sangan or Forceful Sentry. But I think of these two, Forceful is probably more annoying because we won't be able to... I mean, unless we set everything on field, uh, we won't quite be able to, you know, get the most out of our hand here. So I feel like hmm, it's, it's awkward. But yeah, we do just send the Forceful. I think that is correct. Uh, so we're leaving them with the Sangan DD Warrior Lady and uh, some traps that will get shut off by Decree. So they are going to draw there, uh, summon out a Warrior Lady attack into our set. It is just the uh, spy here, so we get out another spy from deck. And I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. They're going to set two, set three, pass back to us. And then in the end phase, we're just going to fire this Decree here, shutting off any traps that they might have. And then we're going to chain a Ring of Destruction to the Decree, uh, popping their DD Warrior Lady. Um, because, you know, once Decree's up, we won't be able to use our Destruction. So, yeah, that will pop that, and I think we should be able to win the game from here. We're going to fire a Reborn, uh, and bring back our Cannon Soldier here. We're going to switch our Spies to attack, summon out this, uh, Witch of the Black Forest, and, you know, we also had the last will to go for even more plays, but, yeah, this should be more than enough, because that's 24, 35, uh, 4,900, and then the monsters on board is 2,000 damage. So, yeah, that'll be more than enough to kill our opponent there. And, you know, what we could have done even further is we could have last rolled out a scientist and just kept bringing out even more fodder as well for Cannon Soldier. So, yeah, this is major overkill, and we do indeed win that game too. So, game three, you know, as I mentioned, you'd be siding out of the scientist stuff here. But uh, I think that, like, because I want to show what this deck can do, uh, I do keep the science stuff in. Um, but this match might have potentially gone in this deck's favor if we were actually playing in a tournament setting and uh, siding out of all that. Um, but as is, uh, our opponent's going to go for Graceful here, pitching a Reaper and a Fiber Jar. They're then going to fire a Delinquent Duo here. And as long as they don't hit the Charity, I'm feeling okay. They hit a uh, Mystical Space Typhoon, so I'm fine with that. We're going to pitch the Call of the Han, which is dead at this point. Um, and they've got a Forceful. That's pretty rough. They'll be able to send back the Charity. But luckily, Cyberdar plus Decree are kind of awkward for them. Um, they're just going to set two pass back to us. We draw a Cannon Soldier here. And uh, we just set the Cyberdar. Set Decree, pass back to them. Uh, Cyberdar can get us sort of more monsters here uh, and more cards in general. But it's going to flip up a Witch of Black Force here, hit into a Cyber Jar uh, that will pop the field and hit five pretty good ones. It's a lot of monsters on field, um, as well as a turtle in hand for combo plays. Mirror Force as well, uh, in case they make an aggressive push before we've set up Decree. Uh, and they're going to send just... Oh, wow. Um, so they actually don't have any monsters here. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we are just going to actually just set all of our monsters in case they've got like a snatch shield or something. Uh, no need to let them take them. And we figure that they're going to just fire the dark hole here either way. So yeah. And we've got the decree for the uh, TT. So I figure that part shouldn't matter really. Uh, we don't need to really worry about flipping our monsters up. Um, yeah, this is, this is a kind of interesting uh, game state here. They're going to dark hole the board. And they're going to Painful Choice here. So then Confi, Just Desserts, Just Desserts, Just Desserts, and Ceasefire. I think of these, we care the least about Just Desserts. I think we give them Ceasefire here, actually, because, you know, Just Desserts combos with Trio, but Ceasefire does not um, because the tokens are normal. So I think we do just give them Ceasefire. Yeah, because that will deal the least damage to us. We've already gone through our Fiber Jar and our Cyber Jar, so we don't really care as much about Flip Monsters. Um, unfortunately, they've got a Breaker for our Decree there. And so they will be able to just set a bunch of back row pass back to us. We're just going to bring out this can soldier, set two pass back to them. Um, the reason we summon it is because we know about the TT. We don't want to flip can soldier into TT. Um, so that's why I go for that. They've got a Gakugiri Panda here, uh, which will be left up to 1300. They're going to attack in with the breaker. And we're just going to mirror force that. We could have potentially just used the ring on the breaker, um, popped it that way, and then kept our can soldier lower than our Gakugiri. But I think that would have been awkward into the trio that they've got. And they know that it's going to be awkward for us into the trio. So they're going to bring back that Gyaku Yeri, pass back to us. We draw Harpies, which is about the best thing we could draw here. Unfortunately, our opponent does have Io. So that will shut down the Harpies. We could just, you know, keep the game state as is with the Cannon Soldier here. 
Um, but, you know, we know what their plan is. We're just going to trigger it. So they're going to go for the Ojama Trio here. We are going to chain Ring of Destruction to that to pop the Yaku Yire. It's unfortunate because then they can go for TT, pop our entire board. Uh, but I don't think there's a way to do this in a way that, like, uh, kills the Gyaku Yere while keeping Candle Soldier alive and plays around TT. Because what we could do is once the tokens get summoned, we could then fire Ring and target the Gyaku Yere. Uh, but I think that would still be in the same summon window um, as the tokens are summoned. So, like, our opponent would be able to fire TT, I think. I don't quite know. Because no replay occurs because the monsters on our opponent's side of the field aren't changing. Just our monsters are changing. So, I, yeah, I think this is the only window we have really to go for Ring. Um, I don't think there's like a window after the tokens are summoned where then they can't fire TT, then we can activate ring. But let me know down in the comments below if I'm messing up that ruling, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. So we just fire the ring now, um, uh, before the Gyaku Yuri is buffed, because we know that our opponent is going to, uh, have us with an empty board here. And, uh, they are need just going to fire the TT, dealing 900 to us and popping our soldier. So... Yeah, a bit awkward there, but I don't really think there was a way we could have done that differently. They're going to pay 700 for the IO, summon out a DD Warrior Lady attack in for 15. And this is getting pretty rough for us. We draw scientists that will be able to clear the DD Warrior Lady. Uh, we're not going to use priority. Um, and it looks like they're going to go for an Ojama Trio here. Um, a little bit awkward for us. But uh, I think we're just going to go for these scientists here either way. Uh, we know that they don't have a Just Desserts, so we can just bring out this Punished Eagle here. Uh, but the Punished Eagle is serving as Super Robo Yaru um, just to attack into the Warrior Lady to deal the max damage. We, I think we probably should have brought out a Dark Flare Knight to play around Skill Drain, maybe. Um, but the reason I go for Punished Eagle instead, or not Punished Eagle, but Super Robo Yaru instead, is because I want to have as many um, Dark Flare Knights in the extra deck as possible for if we do go for the Scientist Turtle play later. And we don't want our monster to get banished. Um, so we just go for the Punished Eagle as the Super Robo Yaru. Um, just to get in the same amount of damage, um, but, you know, not risk having it get banished. So kind of long-winded and complicated explanation there, but, uh, that's why I did what I did there. Um, maybe not correct, but it's what I went with. They're just going to bring out a Sangen attack in to our scientists here, uh, dealing 700, popping that. And we draw Painful, which is a bit interesting, but not under IO. So, uh, we are just going to, um, set this Painful here, pass back through our opponent. And uh, they're going to bring out a Gyakuyari Panda, which is really, really rough for us. Uh, they do need to have to pay 700 for the IO, um, but it won't matter because they've got a Ceasefire as well uh, to pair with their two effect monsters on field. So that will indeed be the end of the game. Not really much we could have done there at the very end. Uh, although, again, let me know about like the time window if that does need work that way. I think ultimately we still would have lost here um, just based on the board states and the cards that we drew. Um, but it might have been a bit of a closer game there. Um, but, you know, let me know what you think about the Scientist deck uh, in the comments down below. Uh, do you think that these games are pretty indicative of the deck not being very good, or do you think that I just misplayed and I'm not skilled enough with the deck? Um, because I personally view myself as not really being the best at this deck, especially in Vampire format. Uh, and I think that in the hands of a skilled player, you could potentially do better than I did with it. So... You know, let me know if you think this deck can win a tournament. And uh, if you are interested in playing in a tournament, then definitely head on over to the YG from Zero Discord server and uh, sign up for that. Also, if you enjoy this sort of content, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I release these sort of gameplay videos fairly frequently. Uh, so if you like it, uh, there's more where that came from. But until next time, I've been Ben from YG from Zero, and I'm signing off.